what's going on YouTube? It's your buddy Will from the What's Up in the Sky 37 channel. We're online at www.whatsupinthesky.com. I've got some space for you, news for you. I haven't had it for a while. Been doing all these Mars anomalies. I got some moon ones to get done here soon too. So stay tuned. I got all sorts of good stuff coming up. Um, getting my little pet back now. Like I said, thank you guys for all the condolences on my father. Every time I do one of these videos, I, I still get stuff from you guys. It's amazing. Um, life's starting to get back to normal, you know how it goes, my mother's, uh, she's not doing as good as I expected, but a lot better than, I, you know, I thought at first, so, anyway, we're moving forward, I thought this was kind of cool, every year we have spring pop around, and I'm ready for it, I'm in Maryland, and we just had snow again the other day, it's been up, down, up, down, up, down, and, uh, like, like, really up, down, snow, 70, snow, 70, snow, 70, it's been crazy up here, and I'm ready for spring, and apparently, so is the uh, rover up there. Every year, they get a solar power uh, output that gets bumped up. This is a Space.com article. Um, you're looking at the, uh, this is the Opportunity rover here. Um, it's having a very similar springtime celebration, talking about our spring. Whereas the onset of spring may put us in a good mood, springtime on Mars has culminated in a very happy series of events for the tenacious rover, boosting Opportunity solar power by output by a whopping 70%. So basically, it gets 70%. Uh, um, it's been up there running around the in the past two weeks. This is where they actually tell you what happened here. Um, having spent over 20, ah, 20 years, I want to say 20, I say 10 years on the roving the Martian regolith, Opportunity has seen plenty of inclement weather and has deposited an ever increasingly thick layer of dust across its solar panels, creating an opaque sun blocking coat. But twice in the past two weeks, the rover has experienced a cleaning event that had blown some of the rusty powder away, allowing more sunlight to fall on the solar arrays, giving a six wheeled rover a sensational power up. Now, I know we saw clouds from opportunity at certain times I'm wondering if they always say it's wind events this happened with spirit too as well i'm wondering if it's uh you know a little water event as well maybe a little uh end of wind action i know what happens they do have major wind storms that come through there and uh, they think the dust devils have done it before as well um they both caught i think dust devils it's amazing what they've uh, actually caught up there um I've got a really good video on one of my channels, uh, The Amazing Dust Devils of Mars, if you want to go check it out. It's one of those quick, fast-moving ones that have a bunch of music in it, but um, the ones you do with... I do those sometimes. I haven't done them in a long time, but I, I do those with the uh, iPad. There's a program, iMovie, on there, but... So, Opportunity has experienced multiple cleaning events by Mars wind action and has contributed to the extending of the rover's lifespan beyond its planned lifetime of only 90 sols. They, they say these are only for like 90, 90 days. If they're really planning for 90 days, they should all be fired. I mean, it, it's gone 10 years because you plan for it. You don't want to lose your job after 90 days. These things better for the billions of dollars we plan to work as long as they possibly can up there. That's why I was so angry about the spirit, or not spirit, the uh, curiosity wheels being all damaged. I'm like, who, who would design that? I mean, we're sending a nuclear power thing. This thing has the opportunity to, to live forever up there, and we send these crappy metal wheels up there are falling apart. You know, falling apart. So I'm going to leave this one in here. It's a cool one. You know, either way, like I said, if whatever happened, the thing, uh, it, it's also, you know, the planet starts warming up a little bit, but something happened to clean that dirt off of it. So right here, you're looking at a, a conception of Sedna. This is a dwarf planet. This is the one they've been talking about. Apparently, there was going to be a huge major discovery. The uh, geeks all got, you know, we're all, I'm a geek too. You know, you know that. Um, the geeks all got excited. <laughs> I was joking with Kim, the girl I've been talking to lately, um, about being geeks. She got herself an I Love Geek shirt, apparently. But uh, this is like, you know, they were really hyping this up. I was like, oh, man, cool. What's going on? I guess the ESO or DSA put this out. Um, they found it pretty cool. They found another a dwarf planet, basically. And they keep, uh, let me read you a little bit of this. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's a long, drawn-out article. I'll leave you a link if you're interested in it. Um, I'll give you a gist of it, show you the pictures of it. So what is a dwarf planet? Some astronomers have been asking that question after Pluto was demoted from planethood almost a decade ago, partly due to discoveries of other worlds of similar proportions. Today, astronomers announced that discovery of 2012 VP113, a world that assumably is reflective, is moderate, is about 280 miles in size and orbiting even further away from the sun than Pluto or even the more distant Sedna, which they found in 2004, um, if it made us, if it is made up of mostly ice, this new planet, it would make a large and round enough to be a dwarf planet, the astronomers said. So if, they really don't know too much about this thing yet, but the more and more we look out here, we're finding more and more stuff. So 
I mean, everywhere we look in the earth, around the earth, we're finding more and more stuff. So it, it's just amazing what we're going to be. If we keep our technology at the rate it's increasing, I can't wait to see what we're going to be able to find over the years coming. So um, let me give you a little bit about it, and I'm going to let you guys go. First, about 2012, VP113, its closest approach to the sun is about 80 astron or, uh, astronomical units, making it 80 times further from the sun than earth. This thing's way out there. And I wonder, uh, let's see, let's see what we can take a look at here. This is the actual planet here. The stars don't move in these pictures, but this little thing did. He didn't move too far, so just a little bit each time. Um, they say it's confirmed that Sedna is not an isolated object. They thought that this thing was, uh, you know, that Sedna was out there by itself. But uh, both members may be part of the inner ore cloud. Now I'm going to, you know, I've looked a little bit into this ore cloud stuff. I don't understand it that much. Maybe one of my uh, subscribers can talk about it or point us to a channel. Uh, I know a couple of really good guys on here. That If I remember, I'll put the link down there for you to their channel to talk about stuff like that. And they're talking about Planet X. Like, uh, you know, that's pretty funny. I haven't seen, you know, they always put, take Planet X and put that towards conspiracy. It's very interesting to see that in an article on one of these, universetoday.com. So... Let's see what we got here. I think this is another one of Sedna. Um, so anyway, guys, much love to you. I hope you had a good as Friday night. Um, I know it's like, just in case you're catching this later on, it's March 28th. Hope you're enjoying your uh, wonderful day. We uh, have been enjoying and ready for the spring here. I tell you, here in Maryland, we are absolutely ready for the spring. It's just been ridiculous. So much love, guys. Take it easy. Have a good one. Peace.